Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kim with Women's Employment Network. Thanks for joining us. Um, just a little bit about Women's Employment Network while we um, get Sarah and Haley all um, settled in. Women's Employment Network is a Kansas City-based nonprofit. We are proud to have you this afternoon at our job fair. Um, our first guest this afternoon is going to be Foster Adopt Connect. We are joined by two members of their staff. We're joined by Sarah Dusson and Haley Stone King, and they're going to tell us a little bit about their organization. If you have any questions, you can put them into our chat box or into the Q&A session. So I will go ahead and turn this over to them so they can share and talk to you about the organization. Hi, everyone. Hi, I'm Sarah Dezeen with Foster Adopt Connect. I'm the HR recruitment specialist. And just before I get started, my colleague Haley is joining us and she will be um, presenting here in a few minutes. Kim, I think she is having some trouble um, getting her video on. Um, so you may want to, I'll go ahead and get started. But if you can look at that, that would be wonderful. Okay. So a little bit about our organization. Um, our mission here is to provide foster and adopted children a stable, loving, and nurturing family environment by support and advocacy for abused, neglected children and the families caring for them. And um, more about who we are and what we do. So our whole goal at Foster Adopt Connect is to break the cycle of generational childhood and abuse and neglect. Um, we're dedicated to providing opportunity for all children to grow up successful, healthy, and happy. And in doing that, we're focused on building long-term relationships and attempts to break those generational patterns. Our core values, customer service, cultural competency, teamwork, advocacy, and excellence. And some more about our organization, um, a little history. We're over 20 years old now. We are actually founded in 1998 by our CEO, Lori Ross, um, formed a small support group um, in her local church. Originally, they named the organization Midwest Foster Care and Adoption Association. Then we changed our name to Foster Adopt Connect in 2016. Uh, we currently have 175 employees. We're headquartered in Independence, Missouri, but we have four other locations in Missouri and Kansas, um, and we're growing and adding other branch locations. We hope to double in size of employees by the end of next year. Um, these are some of the national organizations which have awarded uh, FAC, Foster Adopt Connect, with some valuable accreditations. Um, notably, in 2019, the uh, Innovator Award was given uh, awarded to us by the Human Rights Campaign. Um, so we're very fortunate for that. Diversity, equity, and inclusion is extremely important at Foster Adopt Connect. We have two committees, committees that work to support this commitment. Our DEI committee, committee just uh, implemented a new holiday this year, Juneteenth. And then our LS, LAC, LGBTQ plus affirmation committee participates in the KC Pride Festival every year. And those just are some few examples of these committees and their efforts. But every employee in uh, Foster Adopt Connect participates in continual DEI training. Um, we really work to support um, that goal. Now I'm going to show you a video about one of our positions at Foster Adopt Connect. It's a behavioral interventionist position. Um, these are two former behavioral interventionists speaking to what this position um, encounters, um, the rewards of working as that behavioral interventionist, but also for uh, Foster Adopt Connect. Um, and then Following this video, I'll hand over the reins to Haley and she will talk more um, on specifics. My name is Christina Sexton. My position right now is a BI family coordinator at the Linux office. Um, I have been with FAC for two and a half years right now, um, but I was a BI for a year and a half of that. My name is Chris Miller. I am a senior lead behavioral interventionist. I've been uh, in the BI department for, since uh, 2017. Uh, briefly, I was a uh, case coordinator.
I have always loved working with children and families. And I was teaching in the urban core, and I wasn't making quite enough to make ends meet. And I had a friend recommend um, Foster Adopt Connect and me applying for a BI position. Um, the thing about BI that really drew it, me to it is working with kids who were really struggling with trauma and their behaviors because I'd had so much experience working urban core with students who struggled with behaviors and when you have 25 kids in a classroom you can't manage those behaviors individually but I was really looking forward to working with kids one-on-one -on, -one on those behaviors and working with families to help support improvement in behaviors. Uh, to be successful, you can't be afraid to fail. Um, you know, we work with these kids, we start working with them, uh, and we really don't know them. We're building rapport, and we're learning about their behaviors, we're learning about their triggers, um, uh, we're learning about what they respond to, but we won't know what works. Uh, for, it takes quite a while. Um, so don't be afraid to fail. Uh, if, if an intervention doesn't work, try something else. If an intervention does work, stick with that. Uh, keep using it until something better comes along or it stops working. But you got to try a lot of different things to find those one or two things that really, really work. The client that I've been working with the longest, um, you know, I, I, I felt like I was making progress with him. He was, he was really turning around a lot of behaviors and, and, um, and interact, interacting well with the family, with his siblings. Um, but I didn't really realize the impact I was making until I had a conversation with mom. Um, I was asking her how things went this weekend, and she got kind of teary-eyed. And I thought, oh, no, what happened? And she said, well, um, I had to run to the grocery store. And uh, my client was the only one in the home, and she didn't want to call a babysitter to come uh, stay with him, which is what usually happens when she has to run errands. She felt like she couldn't take him into the public because of the risk of behaviors. Uh, but she decided that day to take him to the grocery store. And she said that he was perfect. Um, and, and the whole time she was telling the story, she was just, tears was flowing. And that's what made me realize that I'm not just working with these kids. I'm working with the parents and the families too. And um, just a little thing of going to a grocery store was such a huge deal to the mother um, that really, that's when I realized that I'm not just a BI for the kids, I am a BI for the family. One of my clients that I worked with long term was really struggling whenever I got there. Every day I would get there and the caregiver would let me know about the 16 things that had gone wrong that day. And every day I would get there and toys would be dumped all over the living room. Something would be broken, a piece of furniture even, a hole kicked in a wall, holes in doors. And slowly over time, with consistency and routine and lots of positives and lots of recognition for all the little things, I kept seeing these behaviors improve. I'd show up on a shift and the living room would not be a disaster. I'd show up on the shift and the caregiver had planned ahead and things were nice and organized and the client had spent time helping with that. Um, and over time, we saw lots of improvements for the family. And while I was working with this client, he was able to, reun well, not reunify, but begin the process of reunification with his mother and stepfather, and also his little brother and sister, who were not in the same home as him. Uh, so it was interesting and wonderful to see the process of him interacting with his family when they started visits because I was lucky enough to be there. Um, it was also really neat to see his parents taking on moments where they took control because they were learning how I was intervening during behaviors. It was neat to see them 
try to make changes in their own behaviors to support his behaviors. And they did reunify last year. And I know it's been a process. And since I'm no longer in their home, I don't get to see it. But it was really incredible to see the changes over time and to see the stress level in the adults decrease and the stress level in the client decrease and um, see all the positive changes, the ability to interact appropriately with his siblings, uh, to be silly and funny and not get mad when his little brother would take his toy. And those are all things that were a process. The coolest thing about Foster Adopt Connect, I think that is that we're so inclusive and we want to reach out to everyone. I'm a mom of a trans masculine child. And so when I applied, I felt so relieved to be in a place where I could talk about my own kid without people putting their opinions on me. And I think that's really neat whenever we go into homes and we can support LGBTQ plus youth. We can support youth of color or they may not have had that support before. We can, you know, just lift people up. And the coolest thing are the people that work here. Um, I have never been in an environment where everybody is so positive. And yeah, we have some moments here and there because every workplace does. But like overall, everyone just kind of lifts each other up. And I, as a whole organization, it's like teamwork all the time and everybody works together. And I really, really appreciate the atmosphere here and that we're wanting to do good for everybody. We don't leave people out in our services. Um, so now that we've seen the video, I'm gonna talk a little bit more specifically about this part-time position that we are hiring for. Um, so as you kind of recognized a behavioral interventionist or a BI, um, you would be working one-on-one -on -one in the home and or in the community with youth who struggle with those behavioral management pieces um, to the degree that it's threatening their stability. So one of our major goals with this program is to try to keep kids in their homes, to keep kids in their placements. And so part of that is also decreasing the need for hospitalization or decreasing the need for residential long-term long services as well. Um, when working with those kids one-on-one, -on -one, you're working with things, just a variety of aspects. So it could be anything from following a routine of a schedule to completing chores to getting hygiene completed. Um, it's also a really fun and rewarding job. You get to go out in the community sometimes. You might get to go to events and do things and kind of support them. So that way they can participate and they can be part of those things. And that's a really vital role to make sure that it is stable within that home. Next. I don't see the next slide. Sorry, we're getting slides moved here. <laughs> Um, while we're getting to the next slide, so part of the qualifications, I think, is what's next. So with qualifications with this job, um, the minimum education requirement that we do ask is that you at least have a high school diploma or high school degree. Um, we do have a preference for a bachelor degree. If that's something that you do have, that's great. Um, with that bachelor's degree, ideally, it would be something that is within the field that we're working in. And we'll talk about that here in just a second um, of who we're looking for. You also must be at least 21 years old. Um, we do prefer one to two years of relevant experience. That experience can look really different. So maybe it's babysitting for years that you've done. Maybe it's been a nanny. Maybe you've worked in a school as a paraprofessional. Maybe you're a teacher. Um, maybe you just have a house with a lot of kids and fa you know family members and you're used to really helping out and stepping into that role. We will take all of those as experience as, ap as applicable as we can. Um, and then on top of that, we will train and coach the right person. The areas that we do serve, um, so like Sarah mentioned, we have a couple locations across Missouri and a, um, one, I guess, in Kansas. What we're specifically highlighting right now is the strong need for our Kansas City Metro and our Jackson County specifically in Missouri. And in addition to that, um, Johnson and Wyandotte counties in Kansas. That doesn't mean that you have to necessarily live within those places, but at least be able to commute to those places to work. 
So who are we looking for? So like I said, we take a lot of different variety of people. Um, so maybe you have an interest or a passion and maybe your degree is in some kind of social work or so social services, psychology background, education background. Um, criminal justice has been something that's been newer, but something that we also see as applicable and something that can be um, trained and coached with this right position nursing background, any kind of healthcare field. Um, those are all, you know, customer service related fields and industries, and you're working with people. And if you have a passion to help out, we can train you to be in this position as well. Um, so some of the benefits with this, because it is part-time, um, there are limitations on those benefits, but what we can provide is paid training initially and ongoing training out. So it's not just the work that you're doing in the homes. You're going to have a lot of training. Um, we do require CPR and first aid certification. That is something that we can certify you in on the job. You don't have to come in with that. The other certification is CPI, which is crisis prevention intervention. So that's our de-escalation te um, techniques and those kind of like it says, crisis prevention work that we do. We also certify you in that and we will train you. So you don't have to come in with that certification already had. Um, EAP, so our employee assistance program is something that would be offered to you as a part-time staff as well. Along with just flexibility, we try really hard to match your schedule with the needs of our family schedule. If you work a full-time job already, we can work around that. If you're in school, we'll be happy to work around that as well, um, as long as you're willing to accommodate and work with us at the same time. So that's what we're really highlighting today. Of course, foster.connect is hiring in a general sense too. So if you are looking for more full-time opportunity or something that's maybe just in a different scope than the BI position, you can always go to our website at foster.org on our careers page and everything will be listed out there. That's also how you can apply for this part-time BI position. Um, and I think on the next slide, there's the flyer. So we do have this flyer too. So if you're really excited and interested in this opportunity right now, there's a QR code right there on your screen. If you're really technology advanced, I'm not, so I understand, but you can scan that code and it'll take you right to our website to apply um, for that position specifically. So I think that's what we have. Um, so we wanted to leave a few minutes. If there is a few minutes, I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, if there were any questions. We still have just a few minutes for questions. So okay. we're, I'm going to let everybody, you can put those into the chat box. You can put those into the Q&A. And so while we were listening to that, I had, did have a question. You talked about working around people's schedule, which is so great to have that flexibility. So are they able to meet with these families, let's say like evening hours or can, are they all daytime hours? Tell me a little bit about that because that can be very attractive to someone, like you said, who might be in school or... Perfect. Yes. Great question. Um, so primarily our hours are part-time evening during the weekday and then weekends as well. Um, specifically, we work with kids after school. So like that four to eight time in the evenings okay. is really popular. Mm -hmm. um, on the weekends, it can vary. So it could be a morning shift or an afternoon shift into the evening. Um, in addition to that, you know, we really try to be flexible with schedules as much as we can, but you would have a consistent weekly schedule. Um, if you were hired with our position. And so we try to maintain that consistency as much as possible. And then we maintain the flexibility around that. Okay. And then we have a question a little bit about if someone comes in, it looks like they're gonna come into this position and really get that passion and that heart to work with kids. If someone comes in and they're really wanting to look at full-time, are there advancement opportunities within this organization if you take one of these positions? Yes, absolutely. Um, so within our video, you saw Chris and Christina. They both have been with us for a few years now, um, and they've actually been promoted within the company. From They both started as a BI, um, so they've been promoted. So there is a lot of advancement opportunity within our agency, and we are continuously expanding and growing, um, which is another great opportunity for people if they're looking for even different locations, different regions, or just higher opportunities within the company. Okay, thank you. So we have just another minute or two to wrap up. I also am not the most technological, it's like scanning. You said you want them to send their resume to you, Haley? Um, yes, yep. Okay, 
that's fine. So you can send a resume directly to me, or if you just have outside questions, I'm happy to answer those as well. Um, if you are just, you know, you super know that you want to apply, if you would like to apply, you can scan that QR code, or you can go to our website directly under the careers page um, and find all of those job listings there and apply through that too. Would you like to mention the website again before we conclude? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's fosteradopt.org. Um, Sarah, I guess if you want to go back to the previous slide, it'll show on the screen there. So fosteradopt.org is our main organization website. And then at the top there on the left, you can do a drop down and it'll take you right to the careers page. Um, and that will list out all of our part-time opportunities and full-time opportunities. Thank you ladies so much for taking some time this afternoon to talk to us about these wonderful um, opportunities that are at fosteradopt.org. Um, and you said that if there's more, that they're interested in just working in general with you, maybe not as a behavioral interest, there are other positions on your website as well? Correct, yep, and they're okay. all listed out there. And if there's a position that maybe doesn't quite fit with what you're interested in too, you can also put in just a general application. Um, mm -hmm. We're always growing, our programs and services are always changing and evolving. So if something does come up at a time, we can reach out to you as well. Okay. You mentioned um, increasing your staff. Is there a specific number of individuals you're looking for right now in this position? So with our behavioral interventionist position, we are looking for a lot. So anywhere okay. from 100 to 200. Oh, so we okay. are hiring tons and tons of workers. Um, and it's a constant need. We always have families and services needing this program specifically. So we're always hiring. All right. Well, thank you so much for that great information. I encourage all of our participants to go out to your website, take a look, get those resumes in. Um, you guys have a great afternoon and thank you for joining us. And um, we will take just a small break um, and then we will come back at 1.30 with our next organization. Thank you, everyone.